Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we're looking at the Dapper Base from Velton. Dapper Base is a multi-effects unit from Veilton. I'd like to start things off by saying a massive thank you to Andy for lending me this pedal to review. Going from left to right, we have a chorus, octave, bass amp, dirty cue, compressor, and also a tuner as well. Now you can pick one of these up for 115 pounds on Tomen. So that is a lot to fit into 115 pounds. It wasn't on my radar, but it instantly reminded me of the Sonic 8 Sonic Bar Boom Avenue combined effects for bass, which I reviewed fairly recently. And therefore I thought it would be good to get it in, see how it sounds, and also see how it compares. Click the link in the description to have a look at all of the individual specs for this pedal. I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's jump straight in and listen to the bass amp, followed by all of the effects. So I'm recording this through my Squire Classic Vibe P bass, which has Fender original pickups. I'm recording through the XLR out.
think about this pedal? Let me know in the comment section below. For me, I really like this bass amp. But actually, when you boost the bass really high, it doesn't get too distorted and too low. There isn't too much of it. And I think that's a really good quality of this bit of gear. The distortion as well, when you up the gain, sounds pretty good. Although I don't like the fact that there isn't an option, uh, there isn't a foot switch option to do this. The chorus, there's just one knob on there for depth. It would benefit from having maybe a rate knob on there so that you can have the speed of the chorus and also maybe a tone knob so we can dial in what it is affecting because I do think that it removes too much low end and so if you just wanted to hit it on you might drop out of the mix a little bit it's going to lose a bit of that girth to the sound of the whole maybe. Moving on to the octave, similar story, I was kind of expecting it. The octave isn't that good, it's okay when you've got the drive on full. What's the point in the second one? I, I never understand it, unless you're playing really up high and you want kind of like a synthy sound maybe. For me, that doesn't really have any use and it certainly doesn't track very well when you start getting to the lower register. <laughs> For some reason, I just assumed that the dirty cue was going to be like a dirt section for, dis for distortion. I, di I didn't even look at it in the box before plugging it in. I just got it open and tried it out. I wasn't expecting it to be an envelope filter. Now that might be really stupid of me. I don't know what the Q stands for or whether what, if that's a common thing. I've, I haven't really delved deep into envelope filters. I'm not much of a funk player. I do like to slap, but um, I'm not that uh, familiar with envelope filters and the terminology. Volume knob can be quite handy because if you engage it and you want it to come up a little bit in that mix, then you can have that luxury. We've also got on there an on and off switch for fuzz. I think this is a really great feature. When you add it on, it just completely removes the sound of your tone, <laughs> but it turns it into this gritty and really funky sounding uh, element to add on to your tone. So I quite like this dirty key section. So last but not least maybe is the compressor. Now the compressor actually doubles up as the tuner. So if you hold down the knob, you get into the tuner. Tuner, I don't think is that good. Green if it's in tune, red if it's not in tune. Sometimes it doesn't tell you how close you are. So you just gotta keep going until it's green, <laughs> until you're there, you're on the note. I struggled a little bit using this tuner, but it is a good addition if you just want to use this and you don't want another pedal for a tuner because it is an essential part of any rig. I think this compressor is okay. On the extreme setting, like why does it even go that high? Why would you want it that compressed? It's too much. The attack is so fierce. Now the gain knob, you've got it up high and the compression low. You could use this as like a distortion, but I'm not a huge fan of that sound. I prefer dialing that in on the bass amp setting. If you've seen my other video, you recognize that this looks very similar to the Sonic Egg. They are very similar in terms of the knobs, the casing itself, the kind of size of it. XLR out, look on the back, those 
these little feet on it are the same. And even the boxes are very similar. It wouldn't surprise me if they're made in the same factory. In terms of quality, I think the Belton feels a bit better, a bit more substantial, and the knobs feel a bit better as well. Obviously, it's got quite similar effects on there as well as the Sonic Ape. I'm gonna do a comparison now of just the preamps, because these are my favorite parts of both pedals. Um, we'd be here all day if we were to compare everything about these two, so go and check my other video out on the Sonic Ape. I was a bit confused when looking at these two. The Sonic Cake amp section is called the preamp, whereas the Veilton is called bass amp. So if you're recording direct with these, should you be pairing the preamp up with a cab simulator and then just having the Veilton bass amp just by itself? I think so. They both sound pretty good by themselves. The Veilton sounds better by itself without a bass amp underneath compared to the Sonic Cake. If it's just the preamp, going to want something underneath there to give it a bit more of a realistic sound. about a 45 pounds difference between these two. Overall, I think that this is better value for money. You're getting better effects and a better sounding bass amp, I think, just by itself. Whereas this, you'd have to pair it up with an amp to get that sound. I think this does a bit more of a, a bit of a more of a mid scoop naturally or by itself. And so it's kind of closer to a sound amp S kind of sound. But certainly with my P bass, I think this sounded really good. Let me know your overall thoughts in the comments section below. Would you buy this? Do you think it's worth £115? I think this is a cool pedal and thanks again to Andy for lending to me because I had lots of fun using this and thinking about how I'm going to review this pedal and what I'm going to say. Keep those likes up, hit subscribe if you haven't already and let's keep this ship rolling. Ships don't roll, they sail, they float. We don't want to just keep the ship floating, we want to keep the train rolling. If you want to help me out with the metaphor, that'd be great. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.